we're gonna be going over one single node inside of DaVinci Resolve that is seriously just the world's biggest cheat code. So let's go ahead and hop into the tutorial and find out how you can color grade your footage with one simple node and not needing to know a whole bunch of advanced crazy things. Okay, note really fast, I am using the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. So if you don't have the studio version, you don't actually have access to this node. And if you're wanting to learn DaVinci Resolve, the studio version really is just kind of the way to go. Let's go ahead and hop into today's tutorial. First thing that we have to do every single time we create anything inside of DaVinci Resolve is we need to be able to set up our timelines in a way that's going to be beneficial for us and to work with our workflow. My workflow is a color managed workflow. And what that basically means is I'm telling DaVinci Resolve to do all the hard kind of coloring on the back end, and then I'll do all the rest of the coloring on the front end. So I have a whole bunch of clips. These are anamorphic. These all were shot with an anamorphic lens. So I'm gonna really quickly just de-squeeze these. I have a couple of these clips of this dog over at this cabin and I'm gonna go ahead and just add these over into my timeline. Right click, create new timeline. I'm gonna uncheck project settings so that I can make sure that we do have the right project settings. Format, I'm just gonna do a nice 1080p. I'm gonna do a nice 1080p. Frame rate is looking fine for me, the monitor. All of that looks good to me. Output looks fine to me. And then the color. This is where you have to make sure that you are doing everything properly inside of DaVinci Resolve or else things end up not looking the way that you'd hoped. So I use a color managed workflow. I would suggest you guys do the same. If you don't wanna use a color managed workflow, there are just a whole bunch of other ways that you have to go about in order to create some of these colors. So I'm gonna go ahead, click into DaVinci YRGB, color managed. I am then going to, this will be clicked by default and I'm gonna unclick it. And I am using a PC. And so because I'm using a PC, I'm actually using, I know that my monitor is set to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. If you're using a PC, most likely that's what your monitor is set to. If you're using a Mac, what you're probably going to wanna do, what you're probably going to wanna do is do Rec 709 A. So for me, Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, go ahead and press create. And now I'm gonna grab these clips and I am going to go ahead and put them in the color space that I shot them. So if I go into input color space, head down to Sony, and then click Sony Gamut Cine S-Log3. That was the color space that I shot these clips in, and I'm gonna add the rest of these clips in to the timeline for now. Anyway, and you can see what that did. That went ahead and normalized the clips, and they are looking pretty good right now. And now we can head into the color page. We can go ahead and add the node that with just this one node, you can color grade so beautifully. The most beautiful, the most, the most perfect color grade of all time. The best color grade you've ever done. Go ahead and add the Film Look Creator plugin. And when you do, I don't love what it does right off the bat, but that's a very easy thing to go ahead and fix. Go ahead and press the default up here, the presets, and do clean slate, because we're gonna be starting from the top of how this node works. So what this is trying to do, try to emulate different film. If you look over here, you have different film styles. So let's turn on the film look blend, a cinematic, Rochester, Akiaska, related and vintage. Um, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this off for now. And I'm just gonna use these color settings and the split tone. So for this specific footage, what I am going for is a nice, cool looking tone. If I want to do, basically with this node and with this plugin, I can do everything that you need to make a good looking image. Let's go ahead and start with the exposure. I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a little bit so I can see this image just a tiny bit better. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a whole bunch of contrast. Perfect, that is looking great to me. And I'm gonna give it just a little bit more saturation. And again, already here is what we started with. And that is where we're at right now with just a couple clicks of a button. And now what I like to do, head down to split tone. Since this was shot in a really cool environment, what I wanna do is just enable split toning. What split toning is, is I'll show you, easier to show you. If you increase this, let's increase this all the way to 100, what this is gonna to try to do is put cooler tones in the shadows and warmer tones in the highlights because we're gonna be splitting those tones. And you can change what color you want that to be. And there's a whole bunch of really cool effects that you can do with just this alone. I'm gonna go ahead and just put that back to the default. And I'm gonna grab my pivot and just push my pivot over and really accentuate all of those blue tones in the image because I want this to be a very cool looking image. Right about there is good. And then you just grab this amount and just slowly dial that back down until you feel like you enjoy where it's at. Right about there. And then you can also just kind of mess with the pivot a little bit, maybe push it a little bit more. And again, 
from here to there in just a few clicks of a button. At the very end of all this, it's very simple to go ahead, add a vignette, add a little bit of halation. What halation will do is on these bright on these brighter areas, it will give it just a little bit of a red tint, maybe some bloom. Bloom's gonna soften up the image a little bit on the highlights. I always like to add a little bit of grain. I like to do the 65 millimeter, take down the saturation, and then make sure the image to focus is all the way to one. Um, Cause if you turn it down, this will actually bring your image out of focus. And I wanna keep it as sharp as possible. And now the last step that I like to do is just grab this bleach bypass and just push this up just a little bit to give it a little bit more realism and maybe just touch on the richness just a little bit. And that's it. So if we look at our clip, we went from this to that just by adding one node and just doing a couple features on that node or on that preset. And now what we can do is we can head into our gallery, right click that clip, head over to the rest of our clips and then just press apply grade. And if it's not looking perfect, all you have to do is head over to that, that exposure and maybe just bring down the exposure, bring up the contrast a little bit. And of course, you still have access to all the other tools inside of DaVinci to get this image where you would like it to be. Let's look at this image right here. Apply that. Again, a little bit too much exposure, so bring that down, and we're good. Just with one click of a button, we are already looking good. I'm going to grab that still now. Get over to here. Apply grade. Again, one click and that is already looking just fantastic. Apply grade, that is already looking, that's looking fantastic also. This clip's gonna look great. Boom, this one just might need a little bit more exposure, it looks like, and that looks fantastic. I am blowing out the highlights just a tad over here, so unfortunately this one would need a second node. Let's go into there and just pull back some of those highlights just a little bit on that one but that is looking great again before after before after so that's the note if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below and well thank you for watching love you